Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. It's Tuesday. It's Dadvice TV Live. And if you are watching us on YouTube, you can say hello in the comments, like Kathleen right here. Boom! And interact with us. All right. We've got all sorts of great people here. For the first time, I got both my mom on her own computer and my dad. That is awesome. So excited to see them and everyone else here. All right, now today, mm, we got us a great topic. We're gonna be talking about exercise, which has so many benefits for kidney patients. Now, before we jump all the way into our topic, if you have not done so yet, please subscribe to the Dadvice TV YouTube channel. I am getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers. And when I get that, YouTube will send me this plaque, a silver play button. I'm gonna hang it up on the wall and be so excited to have that after only two years. I'm mean, so close, so close. Just need about 7,000 more subscribers, woo. Now, if you are new, say new so that everyone in the comments will know and they can introduce themselves and you'll get to know each other. We have a wonderful community helping, supporting each other, very positive. And a lot of times you may have a question, post it in the comments, somebody else may, hey, no, hey, I got the answer and they will share that. So we love meeting new people. Now, if you are new, you're probably thinking, who the heck is this guy with all the energy? My name is James, I am a kidney patient. I'm not a doctor, mm -mm -mm -mm. I was diagnosed almost two years ago with stage five kidney failure. Oh, it was nasty. I spent a week in the ICU and that's not a fun place to be. The doctors got my GFR up and got it stable at 13. They told me, James, you need dialysis. Then you're gonna need a transplant. We're gonna have to get you on a list. Well, I did not wanna do dialysis. I thought there's gotta be something I can do and I, did research, I talked to doctors, I talked to renal dietitians, and they gave me hope by saying, yeah, there are lifestyle changes you can make. Make these simple little changes and they will all add up and you may, if you're lucky, be able to avoid dialysis. Well, here we are nearly two years later, not a symptom of kidney disease. My GFR in the 30s, maybe even higher now. I feel amazing. Tons of energy, all thanks to making simple life changes to the things I did, the things I eat, and all these small changes, they added up to me being healthier. And pretty much, I'm gonna say, giving me a second chance at living life the way I want to live it, not having to go and hook myself up to a machine a few times a week. Now, if I needed dialysis, I'd go on it, but I was thankful to have the opportunity to try to avoid it, and I've done it so far. Now, probably the biggest secret to my recovery, it's not a pill, there's no pills out there that are gonna fix your kidneys, it was working on my diet and working with my healthcare physicians. So the person who helped me the most, not my nephrologist, they're there to help me with an emergency. The one who helped me the most was a renal dietitian. And tonight we have live with us our favorite renal dietitian, Jen Hernandez. Everybody say hello to Jen. Hey, Jen. Hey, everybody. How are you all doing? I'm so happy to be here. Now, for those that are new, tell them what a renal dietitian is. And don't forget to mention your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. I always have to be reminded for the intro. I'm just so comfortable and always so happy to be here. I'm just like, let's get going. Let's start talking. Um, so I am Jen. I am a renal dietitian. So I am a registered dietitian that is also board certified in renal nutrition. I went through my undergrad, learned a lot of nutritional science aspects, did my internship to work towards becoming a dietitian, took my dietitian exam, and then I started becoming a dietitian. I started after working in hospital setting, getting into dialysis and helping people with their kidney failure diet. But after hearing it time and time again from so many people new on dialysis say, 
I wish I made changes sooner. I wish I could have stopped this. I just didn't realize this was going to happen to me. I wanted to get in front of this and I wanted to help people be aware that you can make so many changes to stay away from dialysis for years, if not the rest of your life. It is absolutely possible. And that is what I do now. I work in a private practice that is virtual. I see my clients just like this. And I also have our group, the Plant Powered Kidneys group, that is a very, very supportive and wonderful community. And we talk about a plant-based diet for kidney health. So I help my private clients in making changes to their diet to see an increase or at least keep their GFR where it's at. Don't let it drop any lower. And with the group, we talk about recipes, healthy eating tips, ideas like that. Uh, and I will have a very special announcement for you guys this time next week. So be sure you tune in because I will have a very special, special message for you about something that you are going to have an offer for. But in the meantime, I am here today and I'm here almost every Tuesday to talk with you guys about kidney specific diet and lifestyle changes. And the lifestyle part is what makes me so excited for today's topic, because even though I love, love talking about food and we can talk about food and the labs and all that kind of stuff, I also have a really big passion about exercise and I'm super, super excited that we get to talk about this with you all today. Yeah, and I'll tell you guys, I was just telling Jen right before we started here that I did a virtual checkup with my doctor, and <laughs> he knows I've gotten off on my exercise because my scale is Wi-Fi. You step on it, it measures yourself and all the body composition stuff and syncs it to the cloud. Um, my wife learned that kind of the, the bad way. I was out of town and she stepped on it and I got a notice from my phone that I lost a lot of weight. And I'm like, wait a minute. Now I know how much she weighs. <laughs> but oh, I'm sure she'd love that. <laughs> yeah. But exercise has been a very important part of my journey with going from kidney failure to where I am today. And it's been challenging recently with all the lockdown and staying at home and the hotter weather and stuff, not being able to go to the gym and walk on the treadmill. But um, the benefits are just whoosh, absolutely amazing. Now this week, it's not, we're not just talking about exercise because we thought exercise is good. This is a very special week. Does anybody know what this week is? There's, there's, there's something every week of the year here in the United States. And this week is something related to exercise or that exercise can help you with. Does anybody out there know what it is? Take a guess. Now, we've got to give them about 20 seconds because that delay between us talking and YouTube showing it and letting them type it in. Yeah. But September 21st through the 25th is something special here related to exercise. We'll see if anyone can guess what it is. Give them a few more seconds. If you follow me on Instagram, I already gave away the secret. So if you a follow, reason it's, to follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's plant.powered.kidneys on Instagram. If you just check that right now, you'll know. <laughs> oh, we have, we have some guesses, but no one's got it yet. All right. What is it, Jen? What is this week? This week is National Falls Prevention Week. And I'm sure this is kind of you know, really, I guess, strange, because we're talking about exercise and how does exercise relate to falls, but it really, really does. Mm -hmm. It is so, so important. And falls can get really scary. If any of you have experienced a fall, that you know it can get really scary. Or if you know somebody else who's experienced a fall, it, it's not a good thing, but it, there are ways and there are things that we can do to prevent it and make it uh, less scary and risky for you. Yep, and we actually, Janet, got it right. Happy Falls Prevention Awareness. Yay! Yeah, as a matter of Janet. Fact, I occasionally, I know of three times I've fallen, um, and it usually is my blood pressure, standing up mm -hmm. too quickly, and my blood pressure, I guess it drops temporarily, and I fall. Mm -hmm. Once my watch did go off, and, and it asked me, hey, did you fall? Are you okay? And I didn't respond quick enough. And it called 911. So I just say, oh, it's a oh, mistake. I Sorry. I remember you telling us about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the last fall I had, I hate to say it, was yesterday. Oh, no. I was doing something stupid. I was at the park with my kids. 
enjoying the nice weather. And uh, I was just going around and stuff. And I, <laughs> I fell in front of all these kids and I did not hurt myself. My wife thought I did. She goes, did your knees go out? I said, no, no, no. Just got a little dizzy going up and down. Uh, glad it wasn't on video, but it was a small fall and it was a padded area. So I, yeah. I was okay, but it was just from spinning around and chasing the kids around the swings and stuff. And, yeah. you know, I, my blood pressure just whew, gets me dizzy sometimes for all the medication. And I think it just gets a little too low when I'm being a little too active. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, let's talk about exercise and kidney disease. Now, the very first question I know everyone's going to have can exercise help my kidney disease? Well, there's definitely some benefits to exercise that are really kidney related. So with exercise, we think of our blood pumping, energy, a lot of good breathing, elevated heart rate. This is basically training your body to be able to withstand some more intense activity. And it's uh, another term that people use for exercise is like cardiovascular conditioning or cardiovascular exercise because you are working your cardiovascular system. Mm -hmm. Now, if we think about kidney disease, kidneys are really connected to our blood pressure, right? You can yep. have high blood pressure that causes kidney disease and kidney disease can cause high blood pressure. It goes both ways. So if we know that there is a lifestyle change, there is something that we can do to help train our cardiovascular system, it can help in regulating our blood pressure. It also can help in regulating blood sugars because your body needs energy when you work out, right? You yep. can't run on fumes. Not even our cars can run on fumes. We cannot run on fumes. We need energy. So it exercise will also help with your body's being able with your body being able to use your glucose, use your carbohydrates, use your energy stores, and that can better regulate your blood sugar management. So if you have blood sugar control issues, diabetes, for example, which is the top cause of kidney disease, mm -hmm. this can be really helpful. And you guys have heard me talk about this before where we say when you want to take care of your kidney disease, you want to take care of what caused your kidney disease. Yes, that so, underlying cause. Yeah, yeah. So both of these things can really benefit from exercise. So if we're taking care, if we're exercising, getting in physical activity, that's helping our blood sugar, our blood pressure, and then that can help our kidneys. So there's tons of other benefits when it comes to exercise. And if you guys know of them, I bet James would love for you to drop them in the comments. Yeah. What other kind of benefits do you find from exercise, whether it's related to kidneys or not? There's so many benefits. And I would love to see just everybody jumping in and talking about what makes them feel good. Because that's part of, I think, just like the idea of exercising more is that that motivation and it's always motivating to hear how it's helping other people. So uh, for one, that that's a huge thing. So blood pressure control, blood sugar control, very, very important. Exercise is also shown to help in preventing depression, mood mm -hmm. disorders, anxiety, and that really comes in play a lot with kidney disease because- oh, yeah. I mean, how, how can you not be depressed when your kidneys are failing? That's just, I mean, that is hard. It is really, really hard. But exercise can help with mood stabilization and better hormone balances. So it really does give a, a mood booster. It re, it's scientifically proven that it is mood boosting. Yeah, and I'll tell you, whenever I exercise, for the most part, it's walking because I love to walk. It's easy. <laughs> and... What I do is I pop in my earbuds. I have a walking playlist. It's got like lots of Dolly Parton and stuff like that on there. Lots of good music. And mm -hmm. I start walking and I'm like, I, I'm like those movies from the eighties where the guys walk in and, and dancing <laughs> with it. I'm sure the neighbors are laughing like, Oh my goodness. That guy. And, and you guys, you only see me from here up. I, I'm a pair. Okay. So <laughs> There's a lot of shaking going on when I'm <laughs> walking down the street and dancing my music, but it definitely, it helps me feel better. I get to clear my mind. If there was anything that I was thinking of that's kind of bothering me, like, ah, I could do like some problem solving. So I'm feeling oh, yeah. great, listening to music, getting the fresh air. It's great for my body, my heart, my blood pressure, all that stuff. And it definitely makes me feel good. 
So exercise and some great music. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I used to set it when I would exercise in the gym, I would have uh, Netflix on my phone Mm -hmm. and I would have certain shows and I would say, I'm only going to watch these shows when I am exercising (laughs) on a, on a treadmill or elliptical or something. And man, I would get addicted to these shows and all I was like, I got to keep going. I got to keep watching. And I can't do as high intensity, but it, Hey, it, it worked. It really worked. So if you set, if you set that, if you, and if you guys have heard of the book, um, atomic habits by James clear, I recommend this book all the time. It talks about setting these habits, including like exercise goals and things like that. Um, setting a habit to be connected to a reward. And that can be really, really helpful in setting it and, and, and making it become an enjoyable habit. Because if you look at exercise as a punishment and you think you have to do this, because I know a lot of people talk about, I have to lose weight. I have to get better blood pressure. I have to get better blood sugars. If you think of like this have to mentality, it's really like, that's not fun. That's not enjoyable. So Instead, switch it to, I get to exercise. I get to move my body. I get to go watch my favorite Netflix show, or I get to go listen to this podcast or this music or whatever it is, like the the benefits that you get from it. It's so, so important to have that mindset shift. Yeah. And I love the idea of watching something. When I used to go to the gym, I took my iPad and I would pop up like Hulu or Netflix or something. And I just started mm-hmm. watching a show. And I was watching shows from like the 80s, those late night comedies, and I'm just enjoying them. I'm laughing my my butt off. People are looking at me like, what's that guy doing on the treadmill? It's so funny. I didn't care. I was having a good time. And I actually did look forward to it. I'm like, oh, maybe tonight I'll do two episodes because they're only like 20 minutes long. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to stay on that treadmill longer. I'm going to watch two episodes. And once I kind of built up my resistance to where I could go longer, that helped me get there Mm -hmm. instead of just trying to make it through one episode, then it's one and a half. Like, I want to finish two tonight. I want to see what happens. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, and I should add too, I probably should have said this at the very, very beginning, but um, we are talking about exercise today and just like the diet side, everybody's different. Everybody can do things differently exercise is the same thing. Okay. So not everybody's the same and you always, always, always want to get your exercise plan cleared by your doctor to make sure that it is the right fit for you physically um, and medically. So make sure, make sure you please talk with your doctor about whatever intention you have with your exercise plan. Super important. Really can't say that enough. Yeah, and we have someone, Diana, here saying, maybe I should get a treadmill. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to be buying a treadmill very soon, and my wife and I are going to put it in the living room so that when it is time to watch TV or watch a great football game like the Seahawks last weekend was, I can just get up there and start walking. Even if it's on a slow speed, get my steps on while I'm going, watch the big screen. Exactly. A treadmill is a great idea especially with the cold weather coming. If you're in one of those Northern climates that gets rain or snow, boom, great way to to, to get your steps in inside. Another one that's really great and it's a little more space saving um, are the stationary bikes. So if you don't feel like you're able to stand or walk for longer times, putting a stationary bike, either the recumbent ones or the ones that you're sitting up uh, like a spinning kind of bike, Either one of those are also a really great thing. It's not going to do the step counting, but it is physical movement. And you know, you'll get your heart pumping with doing some cycling. Yep. And we had sis here put that she um, uses an exercise bike. It's fantastic. And Linda mentions she has a treadmill in her building, but she's never used it. Well, use this as an opportunity, a reason. Go down and use it and see what you think about. Just set it on low yeah. speed. And you guys don't have to get on there and walk 10,000 steps. You oh, can no. get on there, walk for five minutes or something. Walk what mm-hmm. you feel comfortable with. Then the next time, try to get there and maybe just a tad further or do it a couple days, then go a little bit further, a little bit longer, something like that. All this, these little tiny steps of progress, they all add up. And if you mm-hmm. wanted to do, say... 5,000 steps in a day. You could go do some in the morning, then maybe do a little bit in the afternoon, a little bit later in the day. You can break it up 
It doesn't all have to be all at once, which is my favorite thing to do. When the weather's nice, get up in the morning, go for a nice walk in that crisp morning air. Then at lunch, when I used to go into work, walk around the building a few times, then get my food. Uh, then I'd walk around the building after I ate my lunch before going back in. Then after work, come home, take the dogs for a walk in the evening. And that was it. It made it so easy for me to get my steps in. Yeah, we got a lot of other people saying <laughs> treadmills. All sis says her treadmill died. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now, now we also talked about exercise helping your heart, and probably one thing I want to kind of mention. Most kidney patients, they don't die from kidney disease. They mm -hmm. die from heart disease or heart failure or something like that mm -hmm. because of the stress, um, you know, their uncontrolled blood pressure from having bad kidneys and other problems put on their heart. So exercise, my doctors told me, because I'm a person with heart challenges. He told me, you got to exercise, James. We got to get your heart stronger. That's really important for you to go decades before you have to worry about any other problems in the future. So that is one of the things that made exercise very important to me. And my doctor, when I talked to him a few days ago, he told me, he says, I can tell you're getting too comfortable with how well you're doing. You got to remember what it was like. Stay on that exercise. Uh, <clears throat> I've gained some weight. Gain way too much weight. Hey, James, we talked about this. This is COVID. <laughs> this is quarantine. We are okay, all I going. tried blaming it on the COVID with my doctor. He didn't take that. He says it's not COVID. COVID oh, doesn't COVID. make you gain weight. It, it's Eat healthy. I totally exercise. disagree with that. <laughs> hey, he you said, have to stay home. You can't go out. Oh, he was telling me, walk around your yard. <laughs> go to yeah. the mailbox 10 times. Like, oh, yeah, I could do those. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's there's always a way to work around it. But I think to ignore the fact of of COVID and I, I'm sure a lot of people, well, yeah, being sure home. people watching, you know, mm -hmm. I, you probably have experienced the same thing that maybe you were really active and you got a lot of exercise and then things started closing down and you had to mm -hmm. stay home and you just can't go out and do things. And um, being forced to be at home does require a little more creativity and we have to give ourselves a little bit of grace period for this change because we are all grieving the loss of the normalcy that we used to experience. Yeah. Going out with friends and all that stuff. And boy, mm -hmm. I look forward to the day that I can just go to the mall and walk around. I love that. Got mm -hmm. my steps in there. All right. So we, we've kind of mentioned some of the good things that exercise could do for your body blood pressure, depression, your mood, making your heart healthier. Um, is there any evidence or anything that it can directly help our kidney function? Cause that's, that was actually a question I had when I was first diagnosed, will exercise help my kidney function? And then that was followed by will weight loss help my kidney function? Yeah. So for exercise itself, um, I did some research into this and there's been some, there's been some studies done related directly to exercise and kidney function. They haven't found any direct correlation. So they, what they're saying is we tested people who had some kidney failure. There was a study with stage three or stage four. There was a study with stage four, stage five, a study with, um, hemodialysis. Nobody showed, um, a consistent improvement. They, they couldn't look across the board and see that it helped with GFR. What they did notice though, across each of these studies is that it really helps with quality of life. Mm -hmm. So kind of thinking back to that mood thing and better blood pressure, there was uh, one of the studies found that the group who exercised compared to the group that didn't exercise, the ones that did exercise didn't have to take as much blood pressure medications. The group that didn't exercise had more medications. They had more pills that they had to take. And to me, like that alone, thinking about that, that's a huge mood booster to think I don't have oh. to take as many pills. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, someone asked me, how many pills do you take, James? And I was like, oh, I take it's a handful of blood pressure pills. I actually counted it, nine every day. You know, I, I, I can do it, but boy, it sure would be nice if I only took like five or four or something like that. Um, yeah, and, and did you know that people in dialysis, they average 15 to 20 a day? That's lunch. Yeah. Yeah. 15 and, to 20 pills a day. And many of them are on a fluid restriction. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's definitely benefits in, in making some lifestyle changes so that you might not need more medication. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, a lot of people, you know, they're so focused on the GFR. What's my GFR going to do? Is it going to go up, going to go down? And I was one of those. I used to be so concerned with my GFR. My doctor kept telling me, stop it. Don't focus on your GFR. Focus on how you're doing overall, how you feel yeah. and symptoms quality of life and yeah. really, that's what matters right now i don't know what my gfr is exactly it's been so long since i, I got checked it or it got checked it got checked it could still be 33 it could have dropped to 31 it could be 40 who knows but what i do know is i feel great i have tons of energy and i can do whatever i want if i want to go to the park like i did yesterday with the kids i can go out there and i was running around you would have thought I was a 20 year old until I fell down, but that's because I got dizzy and I did too much stuff. <laughs> but the quality of life, that's what matters. And yeah. that's the thing that you can feel. You can tell. I can't feel my GFR. It could be 27. Mm-hmm. I can't tell. I don't know. But I can tell my energy, no fatigue, that metal taste. I'm sleeping through the night all those symptoms gone, that quality yeah. of life, just that's what we do need to focus on. Yeah, I'm so glad you bring that up because I know a lot of people focus so much on their labs, their GFR, they focus on a number or a couple numbers, but you are more than a number, okay? You are more than your GFR, you are more than your creatinine, you are more than your protein in your urine, you are more than that. So step back and take a look at the big picture of how you feel, how your body feels, and, and use that as a better guide for yourself of how things are going, because that's going to tell you so much more than a number would. Yep. And, and, and Ray was asking, you know, James, do you have diabetes? I was classified pre-diabetic when I was diagnosed almost two years ago. I watched my diet. Um, I worked with, with the renal dietitian really cut back on carbs and I keep those under control for the most part and no longer pre-diabetic. My A1C, I think it's your 5.6 or 5.9, whatever is the, the top of normal is, that's where my A1C is and I am happy. So nope, no diabetes here. Um, it does run in my family and that was a concern when I was diagnosed and my blood sugar was pretty high when I was diagnosed. Um, so I'm gonna, I got to see a few people here who um, are taking almost the same amount of blood pressure pills. Four pills twice a day, that's eight. Woo, a lot of those. So we've now talked about a lot of good from kidney disease, or sorry, good from exercise for your body. And while it doesn't directly boost your GFR, it could help improve the quality of life, make you healthier. You know, help mm-hmm. you lose weight and all those things. All those are good. So many good things. Could exercise hurt our kidneys? So, yes, it's a possibility. Um, there is a term called rhabdomyolysis, and that means the breakdown of muscle tissue. So a lot of people are aware that when you exercise, particularly weight lift or do high-intensity exercises, The reason the exercise is working is because it's doing these micro tears, these tiny, tiny tears in your muscles, and then your muscles rebuild and get stronger. So with rhabdomyolysis, that is basically like more of a sheer breakdown. And then this enzyme from the muscle is released into the blood and then goes to the kidneys and can damage the kidneys. And there are studies that show that rhabdomyolysis can cause up to a 40% kidney damage. Now, before you start freaking out and get worried about this, please know that rhabdomyolysis is not as common as it sounds. And it usually happens when there's an excessive amount of high intensity exercise. And when I said high intensity, I mean, really, really like pushing yourself to the limit over and over and over again. Also doing repetitive movement, repetitive exercises that are breaking down the same muscles that can cause it. And oftentimes that people, oftentimes people who experience rhabdomyolysis do not have a history of kidney damage or kidney disease. So it's not that if you have kidney disease, you have a higher chance of it. 
It's more that you just want to be careful. And that's why we say you really want to clear with your doctor about the type of exercise that you want to do, because you want to walk through that plan and make sure your nephrologist can go through and understand, okay, is this something that would put you at a higher risk of rhabdomyolysis? Now, rhabdo, it's rhabdo for short. Uh, sometimes people who get rhabdo might do short-term dialysis because of the acute kidney injury, meaning temporary dialysis, because they, they are under the assumption or, or hope that the kidney will get better. So that is a potential plan for rhabdo. But uh, everybody's different. And with high-intensity exercise, it is still something you can do. It's just not something you want to do over and over and over. Like, I mean, just the thought of doing high-intensity exercises day in and day out, I mean, that's mentally draining. Like, I'm <laughs> mentally tired thinking of that. Like, that's just a lot. So you don't need to do a lot of high-intensity exercise to get benefits. Yeah, I like, I, everyone knows, my go-to exercise is walking. Now, now, what do you think of that as, as walking being a go-to exercise or like my go-to exercise? I, I cannot be more of a fan of walking. Like the, that is the pinnacle of favorite exercise for me. I mean, you can make it as hard or as light as you want. You can change your speed. You can change the length of time you go. You can add in stairs or hills, you change your path, anything like that. You can totally make it your own. And you get the benefit of fresh air, which is always awesome. Mm -hmm. If you do the treadmill, you get to, you know, say do the Netflix thing we talked about or kind of rewarding yourself that way. There's so many benefits to walking and it's, and I haven't done the research on this specifically, but I will say it's probably one of the most studied exercises Mm -hmm. because it is something most people can do to whatever degree that they're capable of. And for people who can't do walking, any kind of physical activity, any kind of physical movement is, is still really, really wonderful. Um, I had somebody who was, she had a boot and she had a foot issue. She couldn't walk. And that was, that was a big part of our conversation up until that time. So she couldn't walk and that was such a bummer for her. But what we talked about her doing instead is doing upper body lifting and she would just hold two soup cans. So she would hold cans and she would use those as light weights. And that is totally safe. And her doctor said, yeah, absolutely, you should be doing that. And she lost healthy weight because she was doing that exercise. And it's building muscle. So we know that it's good weight loss because she's preserving her muscle during that time when she can't walk. Yeah, and there are lots for anyone who, you know, there have been some questions from a few people in the chat about uh, they can't walk or they have difficulty walking or they're, they're in a wheelchair there are some amazing YouTube videos of exercises mm-hmm. you can do even in a wheelchair or sitting on the edge of a sofa or a bed. And best of all, it's all free. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just go out there, you search. And, and there's one one YouTube channel, I think I've probably mentioned it before. Um, this guy, I think he calls himself the Marshall or the exercise Marshall or something. Oh and, yeah. And he, he dances with like some other people and they do it like in parks or alleys or something like that. And people walk by and stuff. And I think it is hilarious. My kids found him. They love him. And like, dad, come do telephone or something with him. And I try just to keep up with them. I can't, but I get a great workout from him. Uh, But there are lots of great things on YouTube, search exercise. Um, You guys know, I do have a home exercise program. I haven't done it in a long time now I think about it. The original, Dance in the Oldies with Richard Simmons, I got it all memorized. I can do every move. I don't need the TV. Just play the music, and I got it. Uh, It gets my heart pumped, gets me sweating, and Mm. it's not high intensity, so it's not pushing me too far. And it's something you could do in your living room. You could do inside. I got to start doing that more. Yeah, I remember I did that same, the same exercises, those workout videos with my mom growing up. <laughs> Don't make me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, okay, that's how I, I learned it. My mom did Sweat in the Oldies and all the, the okay. Jane Fonda ones too. <laughs> now that I think about it, yeah, that's where it came from. Wow, that's probably <laughs> like the 80s. Oh, so long ago. But exercise <laughs> works great. Um, yeah. Now, what about, and, and I don't know if you have any any ideas for this. We I've seen this a few times. A few people have said they have some difficulty with breathing or shortness of breath 
when mm -hmm. they do exercise. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I would say you definitely don't want to push yourself too far. Uh, if you notice shortness of breath, that's probably a sign of your to your body that you know you've got to take it. You got to step back and slow down. There's there's having there's breathing harder and just taking deeper deeper breaths. But then there's shortness of breath, as in you can't catch your breath. And it's, it's causing you probably more anxiety with just trying to catch your breath. You don't want to get to that point. If you're at that point, your intensity level is too high. You want to pull back. And that might mean that you cut your workout shorter, that you do less, uh, whether it's time or intensity, whatever that case is, you got to pull back. And if you notice that, if you notice it happening, um, like most, like most every time that you're exercising, it's a really, really good thing that you should talk with your doctor about. And, mm -hmm. and I would definitely advise that you would probably put your exercise program on hold and talk with your doctor about what's going on because you don't want to aggravate the situation. Yes, exercise is good for us, but we don't want it to cause other problems that it could if you push yourself too hard. And that could be a cardiovascular, again, shortness of breath and just feeling faint or dizzy um, not being able to, to keep up, um, feeling weak or nauseous, any of those things where it's just like, you just feel like this is just too much. Like you have that gut feeling of this, this doesn't feel right for me. You got to put it on pause. Yeah. Let your doctor know so that they can check and make sure everything's okay. Now, mm -hmm. when I first started, if, if a few people ask me, James, how did you get over my fatigue and all that when I first started? Well, my fatigue actually was coming from anemia from, you know, I was just, I could only do so much. So I just started baby steps. I, I remember, oh, it gets me sad here. I was like about to get a tear to come out. I remember when I finally was able to walk down and check the mail without stopping to take a breath and catch it. Um, and I was so excited that I remember working to make it to the neighbor's driveway and we're right next to each other. We wave and our kids talk to each other all the time. I remember making it to the neighbor's driveway and then coming back home. Exercise can just be simple things and you just go a little bit further when you feel comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. But I, I would never push myself too far. because I, First of all, I didn't want to get stuck somewhere and had to call my wife and say, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm 400 feet away from the house. Try the car and get me. I can't make it home. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, I slowly would exercise a little more, push myself just a little further when I was comfortable while focusing on other things. And that may be something if you're, if you notice you're, you're getting too tired and you're, maybe you're just doing too much for right now. But uh, if you do feel anything weird that doesn't feel right, definitely mention it to your doctor. Now, so we know exercise is good and we know walking's a great exercise. Um, how do, how does someone know, you know what, I need to add more exercise to my life. How do I, how does someone know that a kidney patient? Well, I'm a huge fan of tracking. We've talked about like food logs and all that kind of stuff. Any kind of log in my book is just phenomenal. Absolutely great. It gives you such good feedback. And what I have my clients do often is not only do some of their food log, but also do a blood pressure and exercise log and really track how they're feeling and what their exercise looks like. And we set goals with each of our sessions. If that's what they want to focus on, we set goals of how to increase their exercise. So you really want to take it slow and you want to be easy and start with something that feels realistic and doable. And it, for one, it doesn't have to be seven days a week. It doesn't have to be 10,000 steps a day. It can be three times a week. I'm going to walk 500 steps or three times a week. I'm going to walk for five minutes or four times a week, I'm going to walk for three minutes. It sounds small, but all you're really doing is you're practicing and training your body to get used to creating this habit. Because once you create it, that's when you can start growing it. But you can't grow from nothing. So you've got to start somewhere that's realistic and capable for you. And as you kind of talked about with how you got better and you kind of felt stronger, then you started adding a little bit more. That's really the case. So just kind of start slowly adding a little bit, whether it's time or intensity, it doesn't have to be all of it. Just pick something that you want to increase. If you feel like you'd like to go on longer walks, mm -hmm. add a couple minutes. If you feel like maybe you're in a time crunch and you can't extend how off or how long your walks are, but you want to get a little more cardiovascular benefit. So maybe see about adding a hill or if you have a certain track, a certain loop or path that you take, 
maybe see if you can shave off a, a minute or 30 seconds from that walk and you start tracking how long it takes you to walk that path. Yep. Something there that you kind of just start to test out and, and just a little bit. And really, when I say little, I mean like microscopic, you guys, we are not talking about running a marathon tomorrow. We're talking about putting your shoes on. That's what we're talking about. Just put your shoes on tomorrow and get your body used to get your brain used to preparing for that exercise. Uh, so you definitely, again, take it slow, take it easy, see what you can do, and then just kind of take it from there. Yeah, there's my mom. She says she started with 500 steps a day, and now she's tripled it up to 1,500 steps a day. Great, mom. That is uh, awesome. Yeah, and she's gone through a lot. So 1,500 steps is fantastic. Uh, yeah. It took me, oh, it took me forever and, and you know, much younger to get up to 10,000. And, and uh, let's do a guess, guys. How many steps do you think I've taken so far today? It is not 10,000. It's not more than 10,000. I was telling Jen earlier, I'm not doing too good with my steps. But let's have you guys take a guess. Post it in the comment while uh, Jen answers this next question. Now, what are the types of exercises that we probably should be looking at doing? You know, we, we talked about a few specific ones, like yeah. lifting some weights if we're on a, in a wheelchair or something and unable to stand, uh, walking. But what are the main mm -hmm. types of exercises? So I love, I love the thought of the different types of exercises because it's kind of like these different buckets, these different categories. And I'm going to relate it back to food where it's like you have your food groups, right? You have your fruits and your vegetables and your grains. So these are the buckets. These are the different categories of exercises that you can basically mix and match and pick and choose between for what feels best for you. So one of the most commonly known groups is the aerobic exercises. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that really get your heart pumping, um, but don't require, really don't require any equipment if you don't want it to. So it could be walking, running, jogging, cycling, um, elliptical, um, Dancing. rowing dancing. Yeah. That's what so I was doing earlier. Are, yeah. So these are the kind of moves that you don't need anything really. You can just do it with your own body weight. That's it. You're good to go. So it gets the heart pumping, gets you breathing a little bit harder. Now we also have weightlifting exercises. So this is where you could use maybe some dumbbells or a barbell, some of the weightlifting machines at a gym, but there's also things that you can use, like like I mentioned, the can of soup. So mm -hmm. you can use cans or water bottles for weights. You could also just use your own body. So body weight exercises, that still counts as weightlifting. So doing a push-up, doing a sit-up, doing a squat, those kind of things, a body weight exercise still counts as weightlifting and is really, really good for you. And, you know, I talked about the risks of doing high-intensity, heavy training uh, weightlifting is safe and healthy for kidney warriors. Okay. So I really want you to, to know that it is safe for you. Uh, I have clients that do weightlifting and have seen Im improvements in their kidney function. So it is very, very possible to include weightlifting in your lifestyle and to benefit from it. Um, and, and personally I have my, I have my weightlifting, you guys can't see them on here, but I have my weightlifting scars because I grew up as a weightlifter from high school. I, I lifted weights and that was my thing. So I'm very biased that, but weightlifting is so good. It's so good. Um, okay, other ones. We have balance exercises, which is what really ties into the Falls Prevention Awareness Week because balance is what helps us from falling. All of these exercises will help us, but there are balance exercises that you can do. Simple as just standing on one foot. I've recommended that to clients before. Just standing on one foot while you're doing the dishes, while you're brushing your teeth, mm -hmm. while you're brushing your hair. Just when you're kind of standing around, just pick up one foot and just see how long you can stand on. I'm actually standing on one foot right now since I mentioned it <laughs> and I'm going to shift over. <laughs> I'm sitting on one foot. <laughs> <laughs> but these balance exercises are really, really good. It's strengthening your legs, it's strengthening your core, and it's helping your body kind of, um, what's the word, like adjust or um, fine tune that ability to balance. So balance exercises are really, really important. Um, the other one that we think of is stretching. So mm -hmm. anything that kind of pulls and elongates your muscles, it's so, so good for us when we get up in the morning. 
you ever like when you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do, you do that big cat oh, yes. stretch, right? <gasps> yeah. I, so I have a um, inversion table that I oh, use. Okay. And I love getting that, not a straight up down. I get like pretty close, but that stretch. And then I kind of try to do a sit up. It's a try. Um, and it just stretches so much and it helps things kind of pop and, oh, it just feels so good after doing that aversion table, inversion table. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, stretching is so good for you. And, uh, along those lines too, you can think of the, the exercise like yoga or Pilates, mm -hmm. Like these are movements and exercises that they teach you to, to lengthen your body, to lengthen your, your muscles. And it's very, very good for us. It's, an, it's another type of um, weightlifting in a sense, because again, it's body weight. So when you do some yoga moves, you're holding yourself up and that's, that's good work. That's really good work. Yeah. Awesome. Now, before we move on to the next one, the guesses for the number of steps, looking at my Apple watch, oops, Siri got activated. 3,791. Oh, that's so bad for today for what I was trying to do. Um, that's actually, it's not bad. Almost 4,000. Janet, you were the closest without going over. It's like the price is right with 3,000 <laughs> right there. <laughs> and almost all those steps are me going from my office here to my kids' computers because they're doing virtual schooling. And today has been a tech support day constantly of dad i can't log in dad i need some dad i don't know how to upload my homework and running back and forth which is good because i have not opened the door taken a step outside and i've got almost four thousand steps just going back and forth across the house so that's actually a positive for that <laughs> yeah it definitely shows how even our kind of day-to-day -day movements can add up and we don't realize it. I mean, when people talk about having um, a job that they have to walk around like a nurse, I know there was a study done a while back that tracked the number of steps that a nurse will get when working in a hospital. And it's like in the tens of thousands, they're just active. So if you have an active mm. job, that's really, really great. Maybe you can find a way to see if you can tack on another couple steps, like another extra hundred steps or something, if you want to increase your activity. Whatever you're doing is considered your baseline. And if you're looking to improve, that's where you want to start setting those goals. So I'm going to tell you, I, I, I use that exact tip. In the morning, when I get up and I'm brushing my teeth, it takes a long time for me to brush my teeth. Uh, I have a song that I play and I dance. I put on my watch and I am dancing. I got my electric toothbrush. I'm going, I'm moving. And I get almost 300 steps brushing my teeth yeah. while I'm dancing and moving and burning some extra calories. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. That's such a great idea. Like it's just so simple and you're, you're kind of stuck, right? You're brushing your yeah. teeth. Like there's not a, there's not a whole lot you can do anyway. You might as well take advantage of it. Exactly. Just if you use an electric toothbrush and you're doing that guys, don't try to do karaoke because as soon as you pull it out, that thing's shaking and toothpaste goes everywhere. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Now, how long should a person exercise? Kind of, is there a standard recommendation? Yeah, so the uh, US Department of Health and Human Services, they recommend 30 minutes of moderate activity for five days a week. So this would be, I mean, you could even, you could put it into different chunks if you wanted. So you could do like a few hour long sessions or so. They have recommended five days a week because I think for a lot of us, we have that mentality, that Monday through Friday mentality, um, or even like the weekday or the weekends. And then a couple weekdays, like depending on our schedule, but, uh, 30 minutes, moderate intensity activity, five days a week. It's definitely beneficial to spread it out through your days instead of being like, Oh, well, let me just do 150 minutes in, you know, a day. Like that's, Ooh. that's, I mean, that's fine, but that's, that's a commitment. And, uh, are those rest of the days of your week? Is that going to be you sitting in a chair the rest of the time? Like, cause that's not going to be helpful for your blood mm -hmm. pressure or for your blood sugars. So it's, it's great to spread it out through the week, spread it out across your days, even throughout the day is really awesome. I mean, breaking that down three, 10 minute sessions a day could be done in those five oh, days yeah. a week. Yeah, and we may not think that we can fit in 30 minutes, but I could fit in 10 minutes three times a day, which 
It, yeah. It's that, it's that, it's that like we mentioned in the beginning, I, I walk a little bit in the morning or, or when I get my 10,000 steps, I walk a little in the morning. I walk a little at lunch. I walk a little in the evening and mm-hmm. all of a sudden it all added up. I can go for a walk and do 2000 steps easy. If I do that three times, that's 6,000 steps plus my average around the house in a day, it's probably 5,000. I'm not 11,000 steps, which is trying a little bit. I just got to, mm-hmm. I got to, I got to stay dedicated. I got to keep doing that. I gotta keep reminding myself of that. It's so easy to go, you know, oh, it's 76 degrees out. Ah, I mean, it's a little too warm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wish it could be 76 degrees. <laughs> Now, if I am doing exercise and it's something that I, you know, maybe I'm, I'm doing a brisk walk or I'm doing some, mm-hmm. some, 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 uh, sweat into the oldies at home. How do I know if I'm going maybe a little too intense, I'm getting too into it and I need to maybe slow down a little bit. So one of my favorite ways to kind of just get a feel for how much intensity, how, how hard my workout is, is to do the talk test. And this is, this is the thing that you do that everyone's going to turn and look at you and be like, I'm sorry, what? Because it's kind of funky, but what you do is you try to see what you're talking, what your speaking capabilities are while you're exercising. And if you think about, you know, when you are, if you, if you think back to a time that you've been exercising really hard, or you see that person exercising really hard and they're just like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. That is so too that, intense. Exactly. That is intense activity. If you can't catch your breath, and just like we said earlier, if you have shortness of breath and you can't catch your words, that means you're at a pretty high intense level. If you can talk, if you can string together some sentences and, and be able to say something, that's more moderate activity. Now, if you can sing, okay, Ooh, that's if me. you can sing, that's light activity. That's not moderate activity. So that could be a sign that you might be able to bump up the intensity a little bit. So, because if you think about singing, I mean, we think about Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and all these ladies that just, and, and, and gentlemen that just like belch out, you know, they, they use a lot of air. They use a lot of oxygen to sing. Right. And we do the same. So when you sing, you need more oxygen for that. But if you're exercising, your oxygen is used in other areas. So keep that in mind and just try the talk test during your exercise to see kind of where you're at for your intensity level. That is awesome. So I I actually use a version of that. I, when I'm out walking, my pace is I need to not be able to sing The River by Garth Brooks. That's for some reason, that's kind of like my test. And if mm-hmm. I can sing it and not, and I can, and I can hold a note while I'm singing it, I'm not pushing myself ho- far enough. If I can sing it, it's difficult holding those notes and, and, and singing that one. I'm in the right place. <laughs> That's yeah, what I yeah. use. So the river by Garth exactly Brooks. what your body needs. <laughs> now, is there a good time or a better time to exercise? Well, um, I think it really, I think it really goes from what, first of all, what your doctor says is okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first get that green light from your doctor to say, yeah, sure. I think your, I think your thoughts on exercise are going to be great. Whatever you planned, good, go for it. Once the doctor says you're good to go there, what I would recommend is figuring out what's really realistic in your day. Some people find that they want to exercise first thing in the morning, which is great. But I also know of people that say, oh, I'm going to get up three hours before my normal time that I wake up and I'm going to go exercise for an hour. Again, that's setting this kind of unrealistic expectation. They're dedicated. (laughs) Yeah. Well, but then what happens, you know, let's let's think about New Year's resolutions, right? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of January, the gym is packed bright and early in the morning. Everybody's there. You know, end of January, it's getting a little quieter. So certainly by March, it's back to the routine people who are who have been there the whole time. Yeah. So these people, there's there's people that just set up these really really high and elaborate goals, and they don't think about real life. They don't think about what happens when real life happens. And the, and you really want to think about what is realistic for me. If I'm not an early riser, I probably shouldn't be planning on early morning exercise. 
but maybe I'm a night owl and I enjoy an evening walk. So it would be a really great time for me to go walk after dinner, after everything's done and put away. And I just have my own downtime. And that feels better to me because it's something that won't really get in the way of my other plans. So maybe that's better. Or if you are a person who enjoys getting up in the morning and you like to exercise fresh out of bed first thing in the morning, then take advantage of that. Really go lean into what works for you best. Lean into what feels good for you because whatever you do and feels good for you is what's going to carry you through beyond just starting this, but really setting it as a firm exercise habit and part of your lifestyle. I yeah, mean, I, I had a, oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I had a, <laughs> I had a client that I worked with a while back and she, she said she wanted to work out in the morning and she wasn't a morning person. She was a night owl for sure. So we first started by pushing her alarm clock forward. We started setting very, very small changes and I'm talking like 15 minute changes and we started working on getting her to wake up a little bit early in the morning. So one, she wasn't rushed to get to work. And two, she would start to see that she could have time in the morning to work out. We didn't just start right right away by pushing her alarm clock up by four hours. We really cranked it back. And then once she got to that point where in the morning where she could kind of still get ready and have some time to work out, then we started getting that exercise plan set in place. And it got to the point where now she's doing phenomenal and she's got her routine going in the morning. She can exercise. She can have a great breakfast. She can do all of this without stressing about getting ready for work because she has plenty of time to get ready for work. But it started with just initially creeping that alarm clock back to prepare for setting that early morning routine for her. It wasn't an overnight thing. So it's one step at a time. Yep. And I love exercising at night, not only because it's cooler, but it helps me relax and sleep better. Now we are almost yeah. at the top of the hour and I know you've got an appointment. When should I stop exercising and, and, and go talk to my doctor and make sure everything's okay? So we talked about that shortness of breath. So if you notice something like shortness of breath, if you have, uh, if you feel like your heart is beating really hard or strange, like it's just, it doesn't feel good. It's beating irregularly. If you're feeling lightheaded, dizzy, if you're feeling sick, nauseous, if you get a lot of cramps, anything like that, but those are not normal symptoms of exercise, of moderate intensity exercise. You definitely want to put your exercise plan on hold really just stop it and talk with your doctor and find out what's going on. Cause these are symptoms that something's going on and we don't want to cover it up. We don't want to ignore it. We don't want to hide it or whatever the case is. We want to figure out what is going on. So make sure you talk with your doctor to see what could be happening because you want to take care of that first before you get back into your exercise and, and uh, don't want to aggravate or make things worse. Awesome. All right, everybody, there is more information in Jen's blog about exercise, kidney health, and, and you know improving your quality of life, there is a link in the description to this video to her blog, or go to jenhernandez.com, and there's a link to her blog right there on the top of her navigation. I know Jen has to go, so we are going to uh, make sure and get her out of here on time so she's not late for her next client. I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. And if you haven't done so already, please hop over on YouTube and subscribe to the Dadvice TV channel. And go check out Jen's Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook page. Tons of great information there. All right, everybody, it has been a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. And I will be back tomorrow night at six o'clock with another nephrologist, somebody new. Ooh, we've got some cool stuff to mm. talk about. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye.